record button here. Now, hopefully, let's do a couple of housekeeping items here. So hopefully you guys can see both me and Josh. Um, obviously, if you're just listening in and you're not on your computer um, watching us, um, then you're hearing both of us. Um, just let me know if one or two of you can uh, just go into either the question box or into the chat box and just say, yes, we can hear you or yes, we can see you. We'll wait a second there. Awesome. Thank you, Tommy. Thank you, Claire. Thank you, Scott. Welcome. We've got, um, Josh, we've got a pretty, um, we got a pretty big audience here. Um, so we better provide some really awesome. good uh, yeah. content. Now, I would imagine that there are going to be some questions as Josh and I go through this. So please feel free to go into the question section of the um, your control panel and uh, just put in any of your uh, um, just put in any of your questions and Josh and I will make sure that we answer every single one of your questions um, even if we have to stay uh, past the allotted hour that we've got here so um, Josh, Let's, uh, let's, let's get going here. So this is a joint effort between uh, my good friend Josh Nelson over there, who's on the other side of Miami, which is kind of cool. Um, he's like 20 minutes that way. I'm pointing out my window. He's like 20 minutes that way. And uh, so it's kind of cool with technology. We're in the same place at the the same time here so let's let's jump into this let's talk about the total marketing package and let's talk about some of what we want to cover here with you today so we're going to talk about how to create more customers using an effective digital marketing plan that's this guy um, he's he's the pro at that so he's going to talk to you about how to dominate the internet in your local market so you get more leads, so you get more customers. Um, we're gonna talk about how to get those customers to come back and buy from you again and again. We're gonna talk about how to get your customers to refer their friends and neighbors to you. And we're gonna talk about how to increase the lifetime profit value of each and every customer. So essentially what we wanna help you do today is a lot less of this, which I've done, I am guilty of, I have done a lot of this, um, and we want to help you do more of this. So by the end of this, we want to make sure that you've got tools, resources, strategies, tactics, whatever you need to make yourself more money. And uh, this would be actually kind of cool, Josh, uh, a, 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 a bag full of money. So let's see how much of that Thank we... You. Do what? I said a bag of profit sounds really good. Sounds really good, right. Well, look, so here's the good news. So there's, there's some really good news about the business that you guys are all in. It is a relatively simple business to market. Now, I want to make sure I, I, you get this right. I said relatively simple. I didn't say easy. I said simple. But here's the deal. People have a problem and they got to solve it now. So my toilet is running, it's leaking. My um, kitchen sink isn't working. Um, my air conditioning went out. Um, my heater went out. It's cold as hell in the house. I got a problem. I got to solve it now. So they got to go and they have to go look for a solution. And so your job as uh, basically is the marketer of your business is to be where people are looking for a solution. You have to provide each and every customer an experience that they're absolutely going to love. And then you've got to do everything you can to nurture and protect that customer. So they keep coming back to you for years and send their friends, family, and neighbors. Now we're gonna talk about why all of these things are so important. So again, this is this is gonna be all about Josh. So we're gonna switch over to Josh in just a minute. He's gonna show you how to be where people are looking for a solution. We're gonna talk about customer experience and then we're gonna talk about how do you actually nurture and protect customers so they keep coming back year after year. 
Now, marketing your plumbing HVAC business, your home service business, is really all about how effectively and profitably you do three things. One, create customers, right? Number two is keep those customers. And three is how you multiply those customers, how you like rabbits, you make more of them, right? So this is where your business, um, the marketing of your business is, is really critical. Create, keep, multiply. Remember that because that's going to be a theme as we go, as we go through this today. So I always say this, if you've ever seen me speak before, to me, this is the business. We are all in the customer business. It doesn't matter what product or service you sell. I've sold all kinds of stuff. I've sold carpet cleaning services. I've sold bathroom remodeling. I've sold high-end kitchens and bathrooms. Today, I sell marketing automation solutions, right? Josh has been in a number of different businesses. Today, he sells um, uh, internet marketing, digital marketing for plumbing and HVAC companies. But in the end, it's all about the customer, the, the dentist that's upstairs, who's got, who's doesn't understand this principle, by the way, but he's in the customer business. I think he thinks he's in a, in a different business, but he should be in this business. So if you really want to grow your not only your profits, but also your personal wealth and your personal freedom, your key is right here. It's with your customers. All right. So one of the things that before we get into this, I think this is a really important exercise is talking about lifetime profit value of a customer. Now, this is called all different things. I like to call it lifetime profit value. Um, I wrote a book called How to Double Your Profits in Six Months or Less. Some of you, I saw some of the names of people that are that are on here today have, have this book. And one of the first things I talk about very early on in the book is to determine what your lifetime profit value is. Now, in the book, we use a very simple, basic calculator. And what I want to do now is I want to take a couple of minutes and I want to walk through this calculator with you. So for those of you that are driving, um, pay attention to your driving. Don't, you, you know, you might want to do this a little bit in your head, but for those of you that are at a computer that are at their desks, get out a sheet of paper, get out a piece, just a little piece of scratch paper and a pen. All right. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to fill this in for your business and let's get an idea. Let's get an idea of what a customer is worth to your business. Because when we know this number, when we know this number, it gives us power. And we'll show you how in just a minute. But let's do the exercise first. All right. So lifetime profit value is a function of a number of things. Here's a here's kind of a little formula for you for your business, for the home service business. Lifetime profit value equals initial sale plus upsells plus repeat sales. Basically, this is frequency. Acquired referrals and the number of years as a customer. OK, so let's go back here to the formula and the, or the calculator, I should say, and let's start putting in some numbers. And I'm sorry, I got to keep moving this webcam around because it's in my way. Let me put that over here. Okay, so let's start at the top. And for those of you that don't have this, don't worry, just a piece of paper. Okay, A, average sale. What is currently your average ticket? What is the current average transaction value? Now, for a lot of our clients, Josh's and mine in the plumbing and, and home services business, somewhere around 700 bucks. It could be six, it could be eight, it could be 650. I'm for, for easy math purposes, I'm using 700, okay? So put down whatever your is, yours is, the average transaction value, okay? Got it? Great. <laughs> Next, B, 
average number of times a client or customer purchases for, from your business in a year. Now I'm using one. I think for kind of for as an average, um, let's just say it's once a year somebody's going to purchase from you. Okay, put down what your number is. Your number might be two, it might be one and a half, it might be one and a quarter, whatever it is. Put that number down. Number three, C, is the average number of years a customer buys from you. How long do they stay on as a customer? How long are you servicing that house currently? And be real. No one's looking at your numbers. I can't see them. You can see me, but I can't see you. So put down your real numbers because we want to get a real, a real number here. All right. So now what we do is we take A and multiply it by, by B. So essentially what we get in box D is what a single customer is worth to you in one year. And then finally, E is D times C. Basically, how much a customer is worth to you per year and how long you keep them as a customer. So in this example, a customer is worth $2,100. Now, here's one of the reasons why this is such an important exercise to do. A, it gives you a little perspective, right? Your customer is worth not $700. See, a lot of people, when they do marketing, they're thinking about, well, what am I going to get out of this person today? Right? They don't think about, what am I going to get over time out of this person? Right? The other thing also is, and remember, I told you, this is a very basic lifetime profit value calculator. I have ones that I use with my, with my clients that are much more in-depth than this. And if any of you want to go through the exercise with me, um, I'm happy to do it. Um, you have to come prepared. You got to come with your numbers and we'll go through them and we'll come up with a custom plan of how do we increase all of these numbers because that is the goal here. The goal is to say, how do we increase this number? By the way, I'm moving my cursor. Josh, can you see my cursor moving? Yeah, it's moving. It's it on moving. Screen. Okay, so we want to do everything that we can to increase this number. So for example, there are a number of strategies inside of each of these boxes, these three boxes here, and there are others, but again, we're going to focus on just a ba this basic model for now. What are some ways that we can increase our average sale value? Right? We can sell other things. We can cross sell. We can put people into a maintenance program. Right? There are things that we can do. We can raise our prices. We can go to flat rate pricing rather than time and material. Okay? Second one, average number of times a client purchases from your business in a year. That one right there for most companies has huge opportunity, absolutely huge opportunity. Here's, a, here's an interesting statistic. I want to go back. Let me see if I can go back. Oops. Here. So take a look at this. It's a little fuzzy. Um, I didn't have time to clean this up. But here's something I'm always focused on, especially in the home services business with our clients. How do I get people to come back? And how do I get them to come back fast? Because the faster we can get them to come back, and buy a second time, the more likely they are to buy a third time. And here's something else. The more, the faster you can get them to come back a third time, the more likely they are to buy a fourth time, right? So what do we have to do to get them to come right back? There are specific strategies for this, right? So let's go back here, right? Then number three, line item number three here the average number of years a customer buys from you. How do you extend that out, right? So what would happen if we attacked just a couple of these numbers here? Here's what it could look like. So let's leave the 700 alone. Let's just say that, let's just keep it at the 700 bucks. But what if 
we can increase average purchase not from one to like some ridiculous number like three or four or five times, which is very doable. But let's just say one and a quarter, one and a quarter. So over that lifetime, right, we got them to come back just a little bit faster and buy a little bit more. And what if we can extend their buying lifetime from three years to seven years? Look at what would happen. You'd go from a, a lifetime value of a customer of $2,100 to over $6,000, right? Now, this is, some, this is some stuff for you to think about. Now, we're going to show you, obviously, how to bring in more customers. And we're going to show you how to get them to buy more from you. And we're going to show them um, how to stay longer during this presentation. But here's why, why this is all so important and why we're going through the exercise. What this means is, if you have an effective system for not only converting a prospect into a customer, okay, converting prospect, phone call, service call into a customer, but turning that customer into a high value, repeat sale, referral generating profit machine, then here's what you can do then you can outspend your competition initially to get that customer. This gives you a huge competitive advantage in the marketplace, right? If you can outspend your competition to buy a customer because you know that that customer is not worth 700 bucks or 2100 bucks like maybe your short-sighted competitors think, but you know that over time, this customer is going to be worth $6,000, $8,000. I mean, we have clients that do bathroom remodeling. So they start out with a $700 purchase. And then we get them to come back and they do something else. And it's $500, $800. And then in a year or two, they do an $8,000 or $10,000 or $20,000 bathroom remodel. Or they buy an air conditioning unit. What just happened to the value of that customer? What just happened to the value of your business? Right? So by you understanding what those numbers are, you can buy customers and, and make no mistake, when you're going out into the marketplace, that is exactly what you're doing with your advertising and your marketing is you're buying customers, but you can spend more to buy a customer and this can have the potential of annihilating your competition. Okay, so if you take anything away from today, think about this. And this is something Josh and I have have uh, one of our mentors uh, in common. And this is something we both learned from him and we both learned this very early on. You must be thinking of making the sale to get the customer, not getting a customer to make a sale. Small distinction there. Right? But a very important one. The value is in the customer. It is not in the sale. Okay? So, I'm going to turn it over to my good buddy, Josh, who knows all about all of this stuff about how to make customers today. And I, I'll say this as a, as, a, as a marketer that really focuses on, um, on, uh, uh, old kind of old school tactics. I take pride in the fact that I still like old school tactics. In fact, I just did a presentation last week on new age marketing strategies using old school tactics. Um, I love this stuff, but this is like this. I understand it probably better than most. And I've, I'm lucky that I've got a friend that can describe all of this stuff to me. Um, and by the way, I've read his book, not once I've read it twice. OK, because he basically lays out in this book how to do it. Um, but I want to turn it over over to Josh, because, look, this guy, this guy, um, you know, I'm a little biased because because he's a, he's a very good friend of mine. We're in a mastermind group together. Um, we share some we share some clients, but he doesn't say it. Uh, he doesn't say it enough. But this guy works with nearly 150 companies just like yours. He's focused on this niche, the home services niche. So what I would say to you is 
listen to what he's got to say um, because you're going to learn a ton about how to get customers from the place right now to get new customers. If you're looking for new customers, it is really online. So I'm going to stop talking. I'm going to turn it over to Josh. I got to give me just a second here. He's going to go over his digital dominance method with you. Um, hey, did somebody, oh, we lost sound. Now it's back. Okay. Sorry about that. It kind of cut out, kind of cut out for a second, but it does seem to be working now. It cut out. Did they miss really important money-making stuff? I wasn't sure if it was just me or if it was everybody. It was everybody. Hear me it was everybody. Right now? They missed 30 seconds. Okay. Oh, man, Tommy, I'm sorry. That 30 seconds, uh, Josh basically gave us all the secret of how to get customers online for three cents each. I'm really sorry about that. Anyway, let's switch over. I'm going to make Josh uh, the presenter here. If this will cooperate. Oh, come on. Oh, I love. I love go to webinar and it's techno. Oh, there we go. I want that. Yeah, my screen's got me as uh, Christian Ortega, so that might be part of the, the confusion. No, you know what, Josh? It's easy. not. It is not letting me. Why is it not doing that? Sorry, y'all. This modern technology. Hang with us, guys. We'll get there. Can you start talking about anything before, while I'm trying to figure this out? Sure, sure. I can start diving in. So, I mean, ultimately, first of all, thanks for joining us on this webinar. I'm really excited about talking about the culmination of uh, generating leads and maximizing your lead flow, as well as leveraging um, repeat and referral marketing strategies to, to take a single customer into a repeat buyer. So I think it's kind of a cool fusion that we're doing here. And what I want to cover during the time that we have together is I want to outline really what the total marketing package looks like and what the digital dominance method is for really owning your local space online for your plumbing and HVAC related services. I want to outline the three mistakes that most plumbing and HVAC companies are making uh, when it comes to winning online. And then I'm going to spell out the blueprint and really show you what you should be doing in order to maximize your lead flow online. And are you guys still hearing me, Brian? I don't yeah, know I'm you... hearing. Hold on. I'm. I click the thing. Oh, there we go. There we go. Got it. Man, there Josh, it wasn't. It wasn't. Um, it wasn't letting me go to the to the drop down where I can make you the presenter. I'm sorry, everybody. Thanks for thanks for hanging in there with us through our technical difficulties. Everybody should see my screen, right? Where I'm saying yes. You you should, you're about to discover. You seen that, Brian? Okay. So I, I think when Brian was introducing me, some of the audio cut out. I won't spend a lot of time reiterating, but you know, just so you know who I am and why it makes sense to listen to what I'm about to share, I am the author of Internet Marketing for Plumbing and HVAC Contractors, How to Triple Your Sales by Getting Your Internet Marketing Right. Um, my knowledge is the best-selling internet marketing book in this particular space. Uh, I'm actively involved in PCC, QSC, Service Roundtable, Nextstar. Uh, I publish and speak for uh, publications like Plumbing and Mechanical and Contractor Magazine. Uh, we have a company that specializes just in working with plumbing and HVAC companies, and we were really excited to have made the Inc. 5000 list this year of the fastest growing companies in the United States. And so just a cool shot of our company celebrating um, and why we're so excited about working with this industry and the impact we can have helping you generate more leads, grow your sales, and really maximize your lead flow online. But I'd say probably more important than any of that stuff is that I've had the opportunity to work one-on-one, -on -one, literally with hundreds of plumbing and HVAC companies all throughout the country and, and occasionally internationally, and have had the opportunity to see a lot of them go from relative obscurity online 
to the point where they now dominate their local marketplaces, many of them getting over 100 calls per month, and in some cases, seen, I've seen them grow by in excess of a million dollars per year in revenue growth. And so what I'm going to share with you really is based on real-world examples and case studies and what we've really seen work in the real world. And kind of in working with all of these different companies, and I also run a podcast where I interview some of the most successful plumbing and HVAC companies in the country, you know, there's a couple things that I've discovered. Um, I've seen companies in smaller markets. We're talking about markets um, of less than 100,000 people doing upwards of $10 million per year in revenue. And I've seen companies in major markets do in excess of $30 million per year. Uh, one of them is actually Hiller Plumbing, which actually does over $80 million per year in annualized revenue. And the reason I say that is because I, I want you to think about the true opportunity that you have in this plumbing and HVAC business. No matter where you're at today, you know, are you truly maximizing? Are you doing $10 million per year in, in a smaller market? And if not, I hope this kind of inspires you to say, man, there's a bigger opportunity. There are things that I could be doing that I'm not that would help me drive more revenue. And just think about what that increase in revenue could mean to you as an organization. You know, would it mean more freedom for you and your family? Would it give you the ability to hire your guys and, and maybe pay them a little bit more? And so as, as I look at that, and as I look, man, this guy's in a 100,000 population and he's doing $10 million per year in revenue. And so you know, really what you have to ask is what are they doing differently that you're not doing? And you know, what I've found in working with some of these companies and interviewing them and really drilling down on their business model, on their, on their marketing strategy, is that they, they all have a very proactive multi-channel marketing strategy that's focused around generating customers and converting that one-time customer into a repeat buyer. It kind of all goes back to that exercise that you just did with Brian where you figured out what your lifetime customer value is and if you can maximize that lifetime customer value, like Brian said, you can spend more to, an, to acquire customers. If you can spend more to acquire customers, then you can be playing in all of the areas that make sense from a lead generation perspective. And what the other thing I notice is that they are all highly emphasis have a place a high emphasis on internet marketing. They they're focused on offline, they're focused on online, they do inbound, they do outbound. But in just about every case, the number one new customer lead generator for them has been internet marketing. And we know now that the internet is the number one place your customers are looking when they need plumbing and HVAC related services. And so I, I just want to spend a second and kind of walk you through your customers buying process because if you can see Joe Jones through Joe Jones eyes then you can market to him in a way that he's gonna buy so just think about your average customer you know whether you're in the plumbing or HVAC space I'm gonna use a plumbing example typically what happens is your customer has a problem right their water heater stops working or a, a drain is clogged or there's some other plumbing situation that's going on and at that point in time they have a couple different options and a couple different paths that they can follow in order to find a solution and their number one preferred solution is to be work with a company they've done business with in the past so they've done business with XYZ plumbing company or XYZ HVAC company and so they call them back, right? And so Brian and the second portion is really going to focus on that piece of it. How do we get those customers to um, to know us, like us, remember us, and use us again and again? But in the absence of that, they don't know anybody. Maybe they're new to the area. They've never used a plumbing company, or they've had a bad experience with the previous company they used. Their natural propensity is to go and run a search, either on their phone, that's happening more and more, or on a desktop, you know, run run a search on Google, and Excuse me. What we're finding is that statistics tell us, and this is some of the latest latest information, more than 85% of consumers are using the internet in some form or fashion when they need plumbing and HVAC related services. So it's really the number one place that they're looking. And what they're doing when they run that search, they're, they're running a search, they're finding out what comes up, 
And they're looking on Google. They're looking on Yelp. They're looking on Angie's List. They're looking on Home Advisor. They're not just looking at one particular place. And just think about this from your, your perspective. If you were looking for a service provider, as you search, the main thing you're looking for is a company that has online reviews. So they run the search. They see what options come up. They look at the reviews. And then once they've shortlisted the companies and they say, OK, it looks like I like this company because they've got these 17 positive reviews. And I like this company because they've at least got five positive reviews. Then they pull up the website. And they kind of get a sense, OK, is this, is this the kind of company that I want to do business with? So that really is the buying process. And it doesn't happen uh, over days and weeks or hours. It really happens within a matter of minutes. And so you probably have done this yourself. Maybe you haven't thought through that buying process. But the fact is, you run a search. You look for the companies that have the online reviews. You kind of spot check. You pull up their website. And then you make a decision. So that buying process and understanding really what your customers are doing when they come to the table, it's easy to figure out the three biggest mistakes that plumbing and HVAC companies are making when marketing themselves online. And the first is not showing up, right? When they run that search, are you showing up in the results? And it's not just on Google. It might be on Google. It might be on Yelp. It might be on Angie's List. It might be on Home Advisor. That's 80% of the battle. You know, if you're not showing up, then you're not even getting an opportunity to earn that business. So that's the first deal is just not showing up and not even being aware whether you're showing up or not. The second is having a poor or non-existent online reputation. So, you know, either one of those is bad. Obviously, having a non-existent reputation doesn't help. Like they find your company, but that nobody has said anything about you. Believe it or not, the way people are shopping in today's environment. They're bypassing, and you're going. They're going to the company that has at least five, six, ten, twenty, a hundred online reviews. And the other problem, obviously, is if you have negative reviews. If you've got a two star or one star, you can be ranked number one, and it will have a drag on the lead flow. And then the third major problem, or the main fail, is not having a website that converts. And and you know you can talk a lot about what goes into conversion. But at the end of the day, it's a question of whether or not your website connects. And again, having worked with hundreds of plumbing and HVAC companies at this point, I found that one of the biggest factors in conversion is authenticity. So when they pull up that site after having checked and looked at a couple of your online reviews, they want to see, is this company a real? They want to see you know, pictures of the owner, pictures of the team, possibly a video of the owner. It just creates that real, authentic personality. And so companies that fail in any of these three areas are, are not going to be maximizing their lead flow online. And so you know, that being the case, what we've done is develop what we call our digital dominance method that really outlines what the most profitable companies are doing in terms of online marketing in order to dominate their local marketplace. And, and it all starts with you know, if we look at this circle that I have up on the on the on the screen, it all starts with phase one, which is the foundation of your internet marketing strategy, which is organically based. And really, the elements that go into that are making sure you have a good website that has good authentic imagery that can connect with the customer, good conversion-based copy that talks about the challenge the customer is facing, why they should choose you versus the competition in just about every aspect. Then also has an SEO strategy behind it, where you've got the, the keywords and the titles and the H1. You've got pages for the various services that you offer so that you can rank for drain cleaning and water heater repair and repiping and all the different terms that people are typing in when they need your services. You've got a strategy to build the authority for your website so that it can rank for those various terms on Google, on Yahoo, on Bing. And a clear reputation management strategy in place where you've got an email going out after every service call. Your, your guys are focused on building online reviews and building your online reputation. And you've got some type of mechanism in place where you're aware of what your reputation is. So if you get that rogue one star review or that rogue two star review, your team's aware about and address it. 
And so we listed this as number one because all of the other online marketing initiatives that you can put into play aren't going to be as effective as they could be if you don't have a good, strong foundation with a solid website, good copy, and a good online reputation. And so when they search, really what they're seeing is this, right? And I've got a Google search result that comes up. They type in your city plumber, your city AC repair, air conditioning contractor in your area. And, there, and there's three elements. There's the pay-per-click listings, the map listings, and the organic listings. And you know this, this SERP result has changed over the years, but uh, ultimately you want to be showing up as often as possible when they go and they're actually looking for what you do. But um, the, the fact is, more than 94% of the population clicks on the organic non-paid listings when they search. So that's why I have that listed as number one. That's why you want to make sure you've got a targeted and focused strategy for ranking in the listings. So not that area above at the top, but the actual map listings and the organic listings below that. And you know we've got a limited time on today's uh, today's session. I'm not going to go into a deep training on how to get ranked in the map listings and the organic listings. I have numerous other you know content on how to do that. If you want to learn more specifically about organic SEO for your plumbing and HVAC company, you know, reach out to me. Register for one of my more specific webinars, and I'd love to to go through that with you. But today's really all about the big picture and the digital dominance method. And so as you get that organic focus uh, squared away and you're really ranking well and you've got a good online presence that, that converts well, the second logical thing to focus on is pay-per-click advertising and making sure you're also showing up in the paid listings. And so if we look at a, at a visual search, right, that's the top three listings that show up at the top of the results as well as the area below that. And you might say, you know, Josh, why would I want to focus on, on pay-per-click advertising. Like what's, the, what's the importance of that particular section? Uh, the fact is, you can show up for keywords in paid search that you wouldn't show up for in organic search. So as an example, organically, if somebody types in Houston plumber, like we have up here, you can rank for that. If they type in Houston drain cleaning, you can rank for that. But if they just typed in plumber, or they just typed in plumbing service, which a large portion of your customer base might potentially do, you need to have a paid search strategy in place to show up for that. In addition, we're finding that more and more of the customers are accessing the internet from their mobile phones. So I talked about that customer buying process. They've got the problem and they need to run a search. Well, things have shifted. More than 60% of your customers are now searching from mobile phones. And when we look at that same search result, um, on a mobile phone for you know your city plumber versus desktop, you'll notice that above the fold, really all you see on your mobile phone is is the paid listings. So yes, you can scroll down and you can look at the organic listings, and customers can choose those organic listings. But more and more people are are you know, they're searching from their mobile phone. They're in a quick buying process. They're going to click on the paid listings. So you want to make sure you have a a We just lost Josh's audio. Hey, Josh, we lost your audio. What's going on? Hey, Josh. Specific and that you got you're back. Yes. You're back. Did I cut out? For cut out for like 30 seconds. Oh, really? Sorry about that, guys. That's strange. I don't, I don't know why that happened. So I guess what I was saying there on the pay-per-click side was, you know, the main thing I want you to focus on is be sure that you're playing in the pay-per-click game as well, you know, when you get to a certain threshold in your lead flow so that you can show up in the mobile pay-per-click listings as well. Hey, Josh. The real next quick. piece, which is yes. Hey, Josh, real yes. quick. Um, I was just, I was, I was, I was looking at at, at different websites, and are are you going to talk about the importance of having a a mobile optimized site, 
or you want to just say I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it. You want to just say something about I'm that? Not gonna spend a lot of time. Oh yeah. I mean so so to statistically more than 60% of searches are now mobile based and if your website isn't optimized for mobile. So whenever they get to your website from a mobile phone, if they have to pinch the screen, if they have to, you know, finagle and they can't just click a button to call your office, then you're going to be missing a tremendous amount of your of your calls. You know, the latest trend is something like 60% of people will leave a non-mobile optimized website if they found it uh, on on their mobile phone. So you know, that's something you want to check right away. Pull up your website on your on your phone. Does it fit the screen? Is there a click to call button? If not, that's a huge profit leak in your overall marketing strategy. So, so good question, Brian. Yeah, because it's about, isn't it so much now about convenience? If 60% of people are on their phones, that means they're moving. They're somewhere. They're not stationary yeah. looking at their screen right now, and they're able to research. They, want, they just want to be able to click a button, and, and you know, on this site, you've got this big ass, you know, call button right here. And then also um, you can click this, the phone number, and it's going to say click to, to, to call. And um, it, it, the reason I bring this up, Josh, is because, you know, more and more, of course, we're doing this too. And it is annoying as hell. If somebody doesn't have an easy way to make a phone call, you're out. You're gone. You're going somewhere else. You're going to you're going to go back and you're going to go to the next person on, on the list. So I think that I, I think that that's a, a you know really good point to bring up is this right here, I and mean, this is critical. Um, you've got to own that. You've got to own that space. I'll be quiet now. Yeah, no doubt. Great, great question. And so moving to number three, you know, if you really want to dominate your local presence. There's a great marketing initiative and strategy that's available to you as the owner of a plumbing and HVAC company, and that's that's retargeting. Um, statistically, we know that something like 90% of the people that get to your website don't take action. So they get there, they were looking for plumbing-related services, and they just got busy and they walked away. And so what can we do in order to target that 90%, get them to come back to the website and get that call? And so what what, what you can do is implement retargeting, which just gives you the ability to place a cookie on the, on the visitor's browser. They were on your website. They were in your local area. Clearly, they were in need of plumbing or HVAC-related services. And now we can serve banner advertisement to them, just those particular folks, as they browse the Internet. So they go to ESPN.com or they go to Zillow.com or they're doing whatever it is they do online retargeting gives us the ability to remain top of mind and we know we're twice as likely to get the call if we can get them back to the website for a second time and so not a lot of plumbing and HVAC companies are taking advantage of this but it's a very low cost way to maximize the lead flow from the traffic that's already getting to your website so moving to number four making sure that you're on the paid online directory listings so it's one thing to be on Google and Yahoo and Bing and City Search and Angie's List and Hot Frog and there's all kinds of online directories. And you want to be in those regardless on their free listings so that you can generate citations which will help with getting ranked better in the Google Maps. But really what I'm talking about here is think about having paid advertising on Yelp.com, on uh, YP.com, on Angie's List. Uh, we're finding when we run a search for various cities, Dallas Plumber, Austin Plumber, that there are plumbing companies and HVAC companies that show up, but then in a lot of cases, Angie's List is coming up and Yelp is coming up, and these guys are advertising on TV, so they're starting to generate eyeballs. And if you want to dominate your local your local marketplace online, you should think about being a premium advertiser on these various directories. Obviously, be sure that you've got your tracking in place so you can track, measure, and quantify the return on investment. But it would be remiss not to be taking advantage of the advertising opportunities within some of these paid online directory services. From there, you want to make sure you have a, a strategy to drive more repeat and referral business. Brian's going to talk a lot about this, but leveraging email and leveraging social media is extremely powerful to remain top of mind with your customers make them more likely 
to remember you and use you again in the future. So being on, on Facebook as an example and posting consistent updates and having a strategy to get your real customers to press the like button, to press the subscribe button, now as they're logging into Facebook to check out you know, pictures of their grandkids and what their friends are up to, they're also going to be seeing relevant consistent updates from your organization, which is fantastic for driving more repeat and referral business. All back to that whole notion, we want to wrap around our arms around our customers and make sure that they remember us and that they, they use us again. From there, moving to number six, all about um, paper lead services. And I know a lot of you guys hate paper lead services. I have it at number six because I don't really feel like it's the highest quality lead you can get. But again, if we want to own our marketplace and we want to be in all the places our customers are looking when they need our services online, you know, home advisor, e-local plumber, networks, these organizations have a pretty large bandwidth, especially home advisor. Home advisor is coming up. Customers are paying more attention to it. They're talking about a potential uh, strategic alliance between Google and home advisor. So you want to think about at least having a, a minimal account with some of these organizations in order to just keep that lead flow going and making sure that you're, you're present in the places that your customers are looking at. Number seven is about social media advertising. So I talked about using Facebook to connect with your customers and drive more repeat and referral business. Uh, the other play is to strategically target companies or, or business uh, owners within your service area. And on Facebook, we know there's more and more people accessing Facebook. Facebook has come out with something they call uh, local offers. And so if you have a good foot in the door strategy, like a $69 drain clean special or a $49 in-home AC tune-up special, um, you can have that featured on Facebook as a local offer. And we've been toying with that and seeing some pretty good results. I have it listed as number seven just because you can get such higher quality leads through really numbers one through five. But as you've really fleshed out the internet and you're maximizing your lead flow, there's definitely something to be said for uh, tapping into paid social media advertising. And so that really takes us full circle to making sure that you have a strategy offline to drive more repeat and referral business. And so I'll hand it back to Brian now where he can kind of continue and talk about how to really maximize that repeat and referral avenue within your business. Yeah, so um, yeah, give me one second because I got to flip back over here. One second. While he, while he switches. Yeah. Keep talking. I would say, you know, the three keys to winning online are, one, make sure you're showing up in the various places where your customers search. The fact is, it's not just Google. It's Google. It's Yahoo. It's Yelp. It's Andrews. List. You need to have omnipresence where your customers are looking. This is 80% of the battle. If you're not ranking, you're missing the opportunity. Number two, you need to focus on your online reputation. You need to have a systematic approach to generating online reviews from your customers and that you've got a filter in place where you can know what's going on with your online reputation because that's going to be the determinant whether they call or they don't. And then number three is make sure that you have a best-in-class website that connects with your customers and is efficient at converting a visitor to a caller. And that's really about authenticity and, and connecting with that customer on an emotional level. Yeah. Cool. Okay. So I'm going to go, I'll take the screen back. Um, great stuff, Josh. Josh is, you know, I, we're limited by, you know, Josh and I are limited by what we can give you here today. I mean, I, we've talked about, we've talked about doing a, 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 you know, like a seminar or something here in sunny Florida, but man, for us to go over all of this stuff would probably take two or three days. But we, what we want to do is we want to be able to give you kind of the meat and potatoes, give you some stuff to think about. And then what do you latch on to? What is the thing that is the, the biggest opportunity right now for profit? And if you get the one thing out of what we're doing with you today, it's, it's grab onto that one thing and run with that one thing. Um, obviously, you're not going to be able to do all of this today. And Josh and I are both available for you as a resource. You can consider us your friends in the, you know, in the marketing business. 
So, okay, so that's Josh's digital dominance method. So, um, you know, I, I just got to say, I mean, I work with I, I, I work with nearly 100 companies around the country. And and some of the companies that we work with are in the 10, 20. Uh, I work with a company that's got it's doing 75 million dollars a year. And the Internet is becoming such an important part of, of what I mean, becoming it's been. But what's amazing is just how much more and more. And so um, we've got to look at this and we've got to look at all of this stuff and see, you know, make sure that we're able to be found online where our customers are going and looking for a solution. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm a, I want to be able to flip around here because I want to show you a few different things. So um, for those of you that may or may not know, I used to be in, in home improvement. I was in home improvement for 20 years. Um, I want to tell you just a really quick story, what we learned from that story and how that has translated into more referrals, more repeat business, uh, more online reviews, but also um, really um, more, um, more profit and wealth for companies and more long term uh, viability in this business. So we owned a company called Handyman Network. Uh, that's me hiding out over here. Uh, that's Addie, who was, uh, who was, um, came into that business. I'll tell you real quick about what she did there. But this was just some of our crew. At one time, we had over 100 handymen um, out in the field with three offices throughout Southern California. We spent a fortune on advertising and marketing. The internet was just starting. This was about 10 years ago. So the internet was just starting to become a thing. And, um, and so one of the, 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 the really critical things that we learned here that probably cost us a fortune. I mean, I know it cost me a fortune. I can't put a dollar figure on it. But I knew better going into this business because when I went into this business, I'm the worst handyman. It, it used to be the running joke. You know, he owns one of the largest handyman companies in the country and he's the world's worst handyman. But I had a great partner who was a handyman. And so what we did was when we first started the business, I actually leveraged my other company, the relationship that I had with my customers in another company to start this one. And so our first two or three months, basically what we did was we went back out to my past customers and said, hey, we're starting a new service. And that's what kind of propelled us forward the first couple of months. And as much as I knew about marketing and about repeat business and about referrals and how important it was, guess what I did the first year? Yes, I stopped focusing my marketing resources and time and money on past customers. And what did I do? I went and I spent a damn fortune on getting new customers. And you know what? I was really, really, really good at it. But what ended up happening a few years later was we had spent so much money buying these customers and not doing anything to develop these customers that our repeat and referral numbers were like this on a home service business. Shame on me. I mean, it was bad. And it must, I know, um, I know it probably cost north of two or three million dollars over, over five years of what we lost in business and profits. And Addie came into the business and one of the first things she she said was, well, what are we doing with past customers? And I said, well, really not doing much. And so she took that on. And so when she took that on and she started to focus on it, she tripled our results. Right. So I want to share with you just kind of real quickly what we did. OK, not real hard, but this is what we did. Number one. We completely changed the customer experience. We designed a new customer experience from beginning to end. We wanted to create a customer experience that was so awesome that people wanted to go tell others about us. That was first. Second, we said thank you. We said thank you the right way. Okay? Meaning we made a big deal out of it. You know, these people chose us. They trusted us in their house. They trusted us with their money. And so we said, thank you. 
And I'll show you some of the ways that we did that. We got their feedback. You know, before this is way before reviews. This was all about us getting feedback about how did we do and how could we have done better, right? And then we use that feedback not only to get better, but also to determine what else could we provide? What else could we do to make ourselves more valuable to that customer? Three, critical, we stayed in touch with those customers. So in the first year of the business, as much as I knew this stuff and as much as my mentor slammed into me newsletters, keeping in touch with customers, guess what? In the first year, the first month or the second month, I did a company newsletter. It was great. And then next month I was gonna do another one, but I got too busy. The next month I did another one. So I did two in like four months. It was another five or six months before I did the third one. And then it was almost five years before Addy came back and reintroduced our newsletter program and skyrocketed our, our results. Ultimately what happened though was we spent more time, money and resources on our past and current customers and it changed the dynamic of the business, lowered our marketing costs, increased our um, repeat and referral business, which then increased our, our sales and of course our profitability. So when you look at customer experience, and I'm gonna go, we're, we said about an hour, um, I think, Josh, you're okay to go another 10 or 15 minutes. I hope those of you that are on can go another 10 or 15 minutes. Um, but I'm gonna, I'm just gonna kind of give you some of the strategies here, I'm not going to go, again, we don't have time to go specifically into every single tactic, but customer experience. What is your customer experience? Now, a lot of people think, well, you know, it's just, it's good. People are satisfied. To me, a satisfied customer is a liability. I don't want a satisfied customer. I want a raving fan. So how do you create raving fans? You create raving fans by number one, designing an experience that creates raving fans. So you start with playing prospect and then playing customer. And you go through the process yourself. And you look at every point in your process and you ask yourself a simple question. How do I make this a wow moment? How do I make it as Walt Disney called it, a magic moment in my business. So some of the things that we would do, and I know, and, and believe me, I know you guys do a lot of this stuff, but do you have a process for it? Is it consistent? Is it written down? Is it choreographed? We had our guys in uniforms. They were open handymen. We had them in uniforms. They had a badge, which had their picture on it. They wore shoe covers. We had a, we had a dress code we were so serious about our dress code and I wish I had a picture of this so I could show it to you, but I, but I don't. We bought a full sized mannequin and he was in our lobby and he was dressed exactly how a handyman network handyman is supposed to look when he goes out to the house, because we wanted to say to our guys and show our guys, this is our image. This is who we are. Okay, so we took customer experience very, very seriously. Now, customer experience didn't end after the job was over. Addy put in a thank you program. So how do you guys say thank you? So what Addy did was we did thank you cards, right? We did happy calls. We did email. We were just starting to use email at that time. And then Addy would also make personal visits and go see these, uh, some of our customers. Obviously we couldn't see everybody. We we're pretty high volume. Um, we couldn't see everybody, but she would go out and she would see people and touch people and say, thank you and take them out a little, a, a little gift. Okay. How do you get Feedback. Now, today, feedback is a whole different world than it was 10 years ago when we were doing it. Okay. But right now, feedback is critical. Getting reviews online, five star, four and five star reviews is absolutely critical. And you guys, believe it or not, I, I mean, I work with window siding roofing companies. They're so far behind you. It's, 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 
it's not even funny. You guys are doing a really good job of, of latching onto how important this is and reviews are and really doing a fantastic job. Josh has a great review system. We have a review system, um, but really, really important. Now, how do you get customer feedback? You get it from the technician. You can do a check-in process with the technician. You, you, we use technology. We, uh, and we do old school ways of doing it also. We send out um, requests for it. We send email requests, link out to, but you've got to be getting customer feedback and then posting that online. You guys already know this, but my question is, do you have a system for it? Do you have a consistent system for it? This was huge for us, keeping in touch. And this is where I see most companies completely fall apart. If you don't have a consistent way to stay in touch with your customers, to remind them of who you are, the solutions you provide and how to get a hold of you, you're missing out on a ton of business. Because here's the truth, the sad truth. They will forget about you. They will forget about you in a day, a week, a month, but most of them will forget about you. You cannot leave this to chance. If we go back to lifetime profit value calculator, this is a by chance, by hope strategy here. This is sad, okay? In order to get here, you've got to be focused on these principles. And one of the most important principles is staying in front of your customers, staying in touch. So we did this through uh, letters. We did postcards, direct mail. Again, we were starting to use email back then. Today, we use it, we use it for everybody. We use the phone. The phone is, is, is also uh, very powerful. But these are all very powerful when you use them all together. You can't just have one strategy. You've got to be able to use all of these strategies. And the best way that we found to stay in touch with customers, the most productive, the most profitable thing that you could do to stay in front of your customers, print and mail newsletter. Yes, to the mailbox, especially today, because there's so much less competition in the mailbox. All right. So keep in touch. That's the last uh, or, or that's the third piece. And then the final piece is how do you get more referrals? Right. So people talk about, well, we want to get referrals and we have a referral program. Oh, man, I'm sorry. I cut out, too. I just I just noticed this. I don't know how far back I cut out. I don't know why we're having such issues here today, but I hope you guys can all hear me. Um, I hope you can hear me. Oh, I only cut out for a few seconds. Okay. Yeah. Um, so look, here's some of the things about referral programs. Are you still there, Josh? I'm here. Can you hear me? Yeah, but I can't see you anymore. Okay. I think that the web connection dropped me off. Oh, okay. So look, here's what I could tell you. You're back. So here's what I could tell you about referral programs. And here's the big mistake that people make with referral programs is they have a program. However, they do a really poor job of letting people know, reminding people, and following through. So with a referral program, and, and again, this is the, I could spend two hours on this alone, but let me give you a few tips here. You've got to have a customer friendly program, meaning it's got to be simple. It's got to be something they want to engage with. Don't keep it a secret. You have constantly got to be reminding people you're a referrable company. You appreciate referrals and that your business depends on referrals and and that you have a formal program that will reward them for making a referral. You want to tie all of your referral, um, all of your referral uh, program stuff into your marketing. So, for example, we put it into all the emails. We put it into newsletters um, for our clients. It's in everything that we do because we want to stay in front of people. 
dedicate marketing resources to generating referrals and have a plan. So one of the things that we do to increase referrals is we run a contest every quarter. Every quarter we have a new contest. It gives us a reason to go back and talk with people again, right? So um, this is one of the reasons why we do this. And then get your staff involved. Let them know about the program. Let them know how the program works. Let them know how they benefit from the program. I mean, one of the things that we do for, for our clients is when we run these new contests, we do, man, we send out a box, a, a two big box like this with posters and postcards. All of that stuff is meant to put the posters up on the wall. Here's the new contest. Give them the postcards for entering people into the contest just so that they are involved in the process as well. So these are some of the strategies that we use. Now, one of the things since, since our days of Handyman Network, um, Addy and I have since started G4 Marketing Group where we take a lot of those principles and now we actually do it for our clients. And like I said, Josh and I have an, a whole bunch of clients in common um, where he's doing the internet marketing and we're doing, we're taking care of, of the back end for clients. But if you want to know more about what we do and how we do it, I can, I'll send you a video that details exactly what we do and how we do it. Um, I mean, we've got strategies for getting people to come back faster because I know if I can get them back within a month or two or three to do that second purchase, I know we can get them back a third time and a fourth time. So we've built all of that into what we do. And we also have a really big focus on, on referrals. And the great thing for, for our clients is that it's super easy. Um, so in Josh's case, you know, they take care of all of your internet marketing. You don't have to worry about it. That whole, you know, the, the dominance uh, method, the digital dominance method, they execute all of this for you um, and we execute um, the back end. So um, at this point, it's 1210. So we only went over by a few minutes and we only had like three or four technical glitches. Um, if anybody's got questions, there's still a lot of you on, 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 uh, on this presentation. Um, we are very happy to, to hang out a few more minutes and answer any questions that you guys might have. Now, because I'm a little challenged with the technical part of this GoToWebinar, um, unfortunately, you gotta type in your question. Um, but just type it in, and uh, as long as you guys are hanging out, me and Josh will hang out, right? We'll hang out for a few minutes. So I see that there, there are a couple of, of questions um, coming in. You're welcome, Scott. This was great. Thanks. Um, okay, so so Josh, here's a um, here's a good question for you. So um, they're ask if I understand if I understand the question correctly. Essentially, I think what they want to know is if they are. If they're not sure about their marketing, their internet marketing results, and let's say that, you know, they want to go to a new, let me just make sure I'm getting this right. Basically, what they want to know is how long before they start doing all of this stuff, can they start to see results with, with, internet, with internet marketing kind of done the right way? Yeah, I mean, it really depends a little bit on a case-by-case -case basis. Depends upon what market you're in, right? If you're in a 50,000 population market versus a million population market, that has an impact. The other thing that will have an impact is how long you've been around, right? So if you've got a website that's been around for 10 years, albeit a bad website that's not working well, that's going to accelerate the process more than if you're starting from scratch. So I'll say those two caveats that will kind of impact time frames. But typically, assuming you're, you're an established company that's been in business for at least a handful of years, when you get the internet marketing strategy right, the way we explain in our book and the way we, we can actually do it for you, typically it's going to take about three to four months before you start to see noticeable traction in terms of your online rankings, your online presence, 
and, and really when you can start to see some momentum build in terms of the lead flow that you can generate via the internet. But it's an iterative, ongoing process. There's lots of plumbing companies and HVAC companies in every market. Most companies are playing this game aggressively. We think that we're the best in the industry, and so we can win the day. But it is an ongoing iterative process, and um, you know, it can take can take months. It can take years. But when done correctly, it should have a positive return on investment within the first three to four months. Um, hey, how important? Someone's asking a question about backlinks to your website to boost organic ratings on Google. Is that still is that still a, a, a viable strategy? You know, it, it is and it's not. So the Google's come out with a number of algorithm updates. The most recent was internally called Possum. It happened over the last three months. Uh, Google really has cracked down on link spam, right? It used to be people would just game the system and say, we need more links in the competition, and they would get links from India and links from anywhere they could get links. And as a matter of fact, that turned out to be a negative instead of a positive. And so with that said, still one of the key determinants for how you rank is the number of quality, relevant, authoritative links you have pointed to your website from relevant sources. So the key is to make sure that you're getting links from relevant organizations in your local area or relevant to the plumbing and HVAC industry. And most of the time you do that by getting in the online directories, putting out good informational content, and then getting people to naturally link back to you. But I will say one of the things we found to be real effective is competitive link acquisition. And that's looking at the guys that rank on page one in your market and seeing what links they have. And there's tools that let you do this, like Ahref and Majestic SEO. And you can then figure out what links they have and get those same or similar links pointed back to your site. Because theoretically, if they're ranked on page one, then Google likes their link profile, considers them to be an authoritative organization. So if you can get those same or similar links pointed back to your website, uh, over time you can, you can be more authoritative and win the day. So I hope that, that answers the question in terms of are links important? Well, yes, you have to be careful. Yeah, if there was more English in there, it probably would have been better. Um, but yes. <laughs> I think that did answer the question. Um, hey, um, Josh, we got a couple of, of thank yous. Um, here's a good one. We are currently doing most of your ideas already. Thanks, guys. Awesome. Um, thanks. Good information. Okay. Josh, do you? Yes. So, um, Mike, uh, Josh, do you offer a review of our current website? Do you also develop websites for plumbing companies? Look what's on the screen here, Mike. Um Reach out to Josh at that number, 866-610-4647, and they're going to give you this whole analysis, this digital marketing analysis. Um, it's got a whole bunch of stuff, um, probably a whole lot more stuff than uh, you want, um, but uh, it will help you understand um, where you are. And yes, they do develop. I'll answer the question for you so it doesn't look weird. Yes, they do develop websites for plumbing companies, about 150-ish of them. And they do a pretty damn good job. Um, Brian, can we schedule? Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll reach out to you, Tommy. Um, you mentioned using discounts to attract new customers. Did that Oh, this is a great question. Does that run the risk of setting the wrong expectations and extracting customers who won't who won't want to pay one standard price? I'll take that one. Absolutely I'll go not. Um, look, you don't want to set yourself up as the company that is doing ridiculous discounting. However, you must have a very strong offer in most cases to move people over. Now with the internet, and I'll let Josh talk about this on the internet, but when you're doing, when you're doing traditional media advertising, you better have yourself a killer offer and it better have some sort of money saving component to it even with your past customers. So when we're going to past customers and we're trying to get them to go from a need item to a want item. So for example, uh, uh, a leaky faucet to bathroom remodel, 
you better bet we've got to offer them something to get them to take action. And so, so yes. And then also we are using a discount to get them to do the second purchase because we know that if we get them, like I said earlier, we know that if the faster we can get them back to buy from us a second time, our chances of getting up a third and a fourth time and keeping them longer go up dramatically. So online, Josh, is it any, is it different? I mean, it's really the same. You always, you always want to strike a fine line between attracting garbage customers, right, and attracting the premium buyer. But at the end of the day, especially when it comes to organic search, when it comes to pay-per-click advertising, they're searching around. They're looking for really the company they're going to deal with. And we talked about the fact that they look at your reputation. They check to see if you're authentic. But all other things being equal, if there's another 15 or 20 guys in your market that have good reviews, that have authenticity on your website, they're going to look for oh, who's going to give me the best incentive to do business. You want to give them a reason, in addition to being a great company, to take action and choose you versus the competition. Yeah. Um, Brett, I'll have Josh reach out to you. He's got some specific questions about how you might be able to help him. So I'll I'll spare everybody that question. Um, all right. Any other questions? So take a look at what's on the screen. Um, you know, if you want, if you if you need help with your internet marketing, with your digital marketing, um, you know, reach out to to uh, uh, Plumbing and HVAC SEO. Um, they, uh, they will give you, they'll do a full analysis of your website, keywords, ranking, blah, blah, all of this stuff. They'll run all these reports for you and kind of let you know where you're at. I was telling Josh, I was with, um, I was, I was with, um, a, a, a guy that we do work with in the window space who does what Josh does in like with, for window companies. And um, it was interesting because he had this one of these reports on a company that that um, was thinking about going or was using somebody else. And just how by looking at this report, they were nowhere. They, they didn't show up anywhere. And yet the SEO company or the internet marketing company they were using told such a good story about, oh, we're going to do this and we're going to do that. And yet he had all, all of these report, probably all of this stuff. And he was showing me, look, for all of their most important keywords, they're not even ranking. This company that he was talking about happens to be a client of mine. They're going to do $28 million this year. They just spent all of this money on a website and a web strategy and SEO and all of this. And they're not even showing up for their most important keywords. So these reports are critical. So even if you think you're doing great and your company that the company that you're working with is fantastic, it wouldn't hurt you to take advantage of, of this because this is so important today. This is make or break. I mean, both of the things that we're talking about really are make or break um, for not only for today, but for um, for your uh, for the future of your business. Um, let me see if there's, oh, wow. Um, Josh, is a call to action or discount on Google AdWords a good idea or does it go against the grain of what is trying to be accomplished? No, it's, it's a great idea, right? So even with your, your text ads, in order to have a higher quality score, you want to have something that makes them click you, right? So your click-through rate is a major determinant of your quality score. And your quality score drives what your cost per click is. If you have a higher quality score, you can actually pay less on a per click basis and still remain in the premium listings, in, in pay-per-click listings. So, uh, so having some uh, call to action, like a discount or a special incentive for drain cleaning or something like that, that will stand out on the page, will improve your click-through rate will also improve your conversion rate from click to call. So yes, it's a good idea and it doesn't go against the, the purpose if you do it correctly and you execute it correctly. Absolutely. I mean, I, I'm, I'm a big believer in giving people an incentive and a reason to call you right now today. And if that happens to be a discount, give them the discount 
get them in the door, and then your job when you get them in the door is to do such an amazing, give them such an amazing experience that now they want to stay with you. Remember, your job is to buy a customer. So go out, get that customer, buy that customer, do what you got to do to bring them into the fold. You'll determine when they come in, whether they're the right customer or not for you. But if you do your job right, that customer will have value for years and years to come. Um, question, just snuck away from work. Will there be a replay? So for all of you, um, we are recording this. So we will have the replay available probably, probably tomorrow. Um, Forrest wants to know what is our relationship with Josh's company. So we're two separate companies. Josh and I are friends. Um, we met um, through a, a local marketing group here, and it turns out that we've got you know a mentor in common. We uh, do similar things. We help our our, our uh, clients make more money, and our services are very um, what do you call it? What's that word? Symbiotic. Complimentary. That's a better word. They're very complimentary. So, like, I have a lot of I have I have a lot of clients that um, um, that use Josh. Josh has a lot of clients that use us. But we're not the same company. We just I refer him. He refers me. Hope that answers the question. And um, once a month we get together and we talk we talk business. Um, this was great. Thanks, Josh and Brian. You're welcome. Thanks for a wonderful webinar. You're welcome, Sa Sandra. Thanks, guys. Okay. <laughs> kind of like the dynamic duo. Yes. yes. His, as you could tell, his costume is bright green and he has a cape. Yeah, my co my costume my costume is a burlap sack. It's my hero right there. So <laughs> if I'm gonna be anybody. I'm gonna be this guy. Oh look, his head is like the same color as your as your walls over there. But Josh has a very cool office. Yeah. If any of you are out in Miami and you want to come and hang out. Uh, you just let us know. Hey, Josh, there's a, like a whole bunch of people still on the webinar. So I kind of feel bad like shutting them off and like going away. I guess at some point here, we're going to have to go to lunch. Um, not going to lunch together because remember, he's over there and I'm over here. But I mean, what else can we, what other, um, what other stuff can we Solid advice and well presented. I think that one was for you, Josh, not so much for me. Um, this was a great webinar. Thank you, Mike. You're welcome. Um, what other questions specific? You've got both of us here. What other specific questions do you have about internet marketing? I, we, I've got a hard stop in four minutes, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep going for four minutes, Josh. What do you think? Let's do it. Yeah, let's more questions. Put them in Come there. On. What should they be asking? I mean, you got to have. I mean, Dave, there's such a. There's such. A, there's yeah. There's so many things that that we could we could talk about. Um, yeah, just reach out to us. So look, I'm a, I'm going to take the last couple minutes. I'm going to make some resources available to you. So look, from you could call us at G4. Um, there's a number up on the screen, 305-856-8788. You can call either one of us. We don't want to confuse you, but you can call either one of us. And you know, if you need internet marketing help, I'm going to refer you to Josh. There's nobody else. I'm only going to send you over to him. Um, depending on what your needs are, he'll determine what your needs are. If you need me, he'll refer you over to me. But you could call 305-856-8788. Um, we've got a number of resources. Look, I, I, you, if you don't have Josh's book and you want to learn about internet marketing, I told you, I read it twice, not once. I read it twice. Um, and it's actually, you know, kind of like step by step walks you through kind of how you do all of this stuff. And it's written in English. So all that stuff he was saying before about href and a quality and whatever all that stuff is, um, 
the book is written in plain English, so even I could understand it. And I know a lot more about internet marketing because of it. So call us. We'll get you a copy of his book. I have a report that I wrote called The Fastest, Easiest, Most Profitable Way to Double the Income of Your Plumbing Business um, or HVAC Business that work for you guys too. We kind of take the um, lifetime profit value exercise here and blow it up a little bit and give you some actual real world strategies that you can use um, to grow your business and also figure out how much that growth is worth to your to your business. And that's one of the things that I also do with my clients is, you know, we, we go through a process called the opportunity map, the wealthy contractor opportunity map. And we just kind of walk through and we see, okay, where are you in your business? How are you generating leads? How effectively are you generating leads? How effectively are you converting those leads into customers? And then what are you doing on the back end? And so we can go through that exercise with you. Um, we come up with a number of what would these changes potentially be worth to your business. Um, you know, I've done this with dozens of companies and the minimum uh, is like 200,000. I have a client I did this with where we found $4 million in opportunity. So we can identify the opportunity and then we can put together a custom plan for you. Um, and then you could either, you could work with us or you can execute the plan on, on your own. Um, it's fine by us, but we're happy to give you the information because some of you will hire us, right, Josh? You'll give them all of this stuff Absolutely. because some of you are going to hire us to do this stuff for you. So we're happy to do it. Um, get with Josh. Again, if you've got, even if you've got somebody that's working on your site and you're paying somebody, doesn't hurt to get all of this, this report and find out where you're really at um, with your website now and whether or not there is. And Josh will tell you, if they're doing a good job for you, Josh is going to tell you, just like I will. You know, I met with a client last week. Um, in plumbing and HVAC business, we walk through the the process with them. He's doing a great job with the thank you cards, with the email marketing, with newsletters and all that. I said, great, tweak this, tweak that, make this a little better, make that a little better. How about it? You know, you don't have to pay me anything. All right, we're at 1230. Thanks, buddy. I'll see you soon. Any parting words? Josh? Hey, back. Got your audio back. Oh. Not even parting words. Thank you guys for joining us. I hope you guys got value from it. And, um, you know, I look forward to talking with you live one on one if you want to talk internet. And um, really just focus on helping you increase your sales and grow your revenues. So have a great day and thanks for joining us. All right. And a few of you are asking specific questions um, for You're Josh. Still there, Brian? Do we lose connection? No, I'm here. I'm here. Can you hear me? Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Now? Can you hear me now? Damn it. All right. Brian, can you hear me? I can hear you. Can you hear me? All right, we're out. Peace. Bye. Thank you. I think Brian lost connection. I don't know if you guys can hear me or not, but you know, for those of you that are still. <laughs> now we lost Josh. All right. We're going to cut it. We're going. Bye, guys.